Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. I'm just Joe, no title. And today's message is about the steps to salvation. And there's two steps that are the first steps to salvation, and that is faith and baptism. John 3.16, as you know, says, those who believe will be saved. But it's the first step. You must believe. In John 3.18 it tells you those who do not believe are already condemned. We're going to look at a few passages that will explain this a little better. And so if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 6. And we'll start reading at verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. So brothers and sisters, I want to point out here that in the first verse that we read, verse 4, it says, and they were partakers of the Holy Ghost. That means that they didn't just believe, but they had repented of their sinful ways and were filled with the Holy Spirit. But they fell away. And God's not letting them come back because it's like crucifying Christ twice. Do you understand? To get a better understanding, turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 8, and we're going to read a parable that Jesus gives about a seed. And we'll start reading at verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which while for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among the thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares of riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they, which in the honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. So I want to point out here that, you know, many people go to the altar, ask Jesus in their heart, but they don't stay Christians very long. They don't receive the Holy Spirit. Those are the ones he talks about first. But the ones that get choked by the thorns, by riches and lust, they receive the Holy Spirit, and they walk with the Lord but they get choked over time with lust and riches because the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy anything that is God's, brothers and sisters. And so we always want to war off the devil and rebuke him in Jesus' name when he tempts us because when you have the Holy Spirit, you have that power, the power of the Holy Ghost, which has power over sin. Amen? Amen. And so now turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 13. Jesus gives another parable right after he says in verse 5, I tell you no, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Repentance is turned from your sinful ways. And Jesus is saying, if you don't do that, you're going to go to hell. In verse 6, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up space on the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. So now, brothers and sisters, 
the person who owns the vineyard is Jesus. And the tree that's not bearing fruit is a Christian. And he may have bared much fruit for a long time, but then he stopped walking with Jesus. He stopped obeying Jesus and sharing Jesus with others. And so he's not bearing fruit for three whole years. You see, God's not going to put up with it forever. So he tells the pastor, cut it down. But the pastor says, no, let me water it and fertilize it for another year. And then if it doesn't, do as you will. And he says to cut it down, burn it. That means go to hell, brothers and sisters. So if you have fallen away, don't wait forever to make up for what you've done. Because God can pronounce judgment on you. Do you understand? Let's move on. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and we'll read verses 16 and 17. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one pot of beans sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. You understand? It was too late. God had pronounced judgment on him. And he lost his inheritance. And Judas is no different. Scripture tells us in Matthew 27, verse 3, Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. He tried to repent. But Jesus tells us in verse 24, The Son of Man goeth as it is written to him, but woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had never been born. So, brothers and sisters, this disciple, this man of God who walked with Jesus, saw all the miracles, did not make it to heaven. Because if he had, Jesus would never say it would have been better for him never to have been born. He waited to the last minute to repent. Don't do that, brothers and sisters. In Revelation chapter 6, Jesus talks about the day of the Lord when the Lamb, which is Jesus, is going to come and bring wrath to this earth. And I'm just going to share one verse. He says in verse 14, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Brothers and sisters, people do not realize. They don't have the right concept. They do not understand who God is. Who Jesus really is. Think of the, the heavens rolled up in a scroll. So brothers and sisters, we all need to fear God. Not just respect Him, but know who He is. Because God always warns people before He passes judgment. One last verse. Please turn with me to the book of John, chapter 14, and we'll read verse 20 and 21. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keeps them is he that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, today is a new day. And tomorrow's going to get better. Because you and I are going to walk with Jesus more and more and better and better. Amen. Amen.